of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, back to your program, Treasures. We are commenting on the book of Acts, chapter 9. And in chapter 9, we can see the conversion of Saul. Saul, for his first time, he met the Lord Jesus Christ, and he understood the truth, and he easily accepted the truth because he could see how much deviated he was and he said it this way Lord what do you want me to do then the Lord said to him arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do after this vision you know uh, Saul expected that he will be guided by Christ himself Jesus will tell him what to do but because the Lord Jesus Christ wanted Saul to be a member in the body of the church and to follow the apostles and to stop being the, the big head or the leader, he asked him to go to Damascus and he will be told someone will lead him. He is not going to lead anyone now. He should be led in order to know the full truth and to have the knowledge of the Christian doctrine. So he accepted the order of Christ. The man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. They could listen to Paul speaking to someone, but they couldn't see who is there that Paul spoke to him. But Paul was speaking to someone, and his eyes were shining because he could see things. But the people with him, they couldn't see anything, and they listened only to the dialogue from the soul side. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. He couldn't see anyone after seeing the light of Christ. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight. He kept like blind three days and neither ate nor drank. He couldn't even eat or drink anything because he felt like I saw God. I saw Jehovah. I had the vision like Moses and others. And he is Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. And he spoke to me. And I was persecuting him. I shared in killing his people. How could I do these bad things? So he couldn't eat or drink. He kept fasting and he was always praying for forgiveness because of the last few years. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus. There were many disciples everywhere. Since the day of the Pentecost, people believed in Christ and be baptized and many of them became like disciples and leaders in the church, deacons and priests. So a good man called Ananias and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias could see the Lord Jesus Christ by his eyes and he said, here I am Lord. So the Lord spoke to Ananias, Ananias, he said, here I am Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. So the Lord himself appeared to Ananias, telling him, Go and visit Saul, because he is blind now, waiting for you. Because I also told Saul that you will come visiting him. Come on, why didn't you, Lord, just open his eyes by yourself? But in order to put Ananias and Saul in like a meeting together, because Saul should be taught by Ananias many good things. And one should take him in the way of the disciples. He should start his discipleship. So Ananias now is an important figure in the life of Saul now. So Christ himself appeared to Ananias after the vision happened to Saul. 
in a vision he has seen so paul saw another vision on the third day of his blindness he could see like a man coming to him called ananias in order to give him the sight back then ananias answered lord i have heard from many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in jerusalem so everyone knew that paul is like a bad guy and he is persecuting the church he hurt many people he made a harm to the church so it's time now to hurt the church in Damascus. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. So the people, the believers in Damascus expected that this man coming to hurt them and to take them as captives to Jerusalem to be judged by the chief priest. But the Lord said to him, go for he is the chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So Ananias, although he is such a great man, such a great disciple, he could see Christ by his eyes. And he spoke to the Lord Jesus Christ as if he is like a friend of the Lord. But though he believed in the reputation of this bad guy called Saul, and he never expected that this soul be a chosen vessel of Christ. And that's the perfect eyes of the Lord himself. Christ could see the good side of anyone. Christ could choose people, no one may choose them. But because of his heart and his will to save all people, he is always working on the good side of anyone. So he considered this soul like a chosen vessel. Just because he desired to serve God, he was faithful, you know, honoring the name of God, so persecuting the people of Christ because these people like blasphemous. That's his belief. But when you, it comes to his heart, his heart wasn't bad. Because this soul is a strong man and a strong witness and a strong heart and he cared for nothing but God's will and because of this faithfulness he will work in the service of Christ perfectly for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake because he was the reason of suffering for many Christians he will now experience how should he suffer for the name of Christ because he will love Christ so much, he will love his name. And because of his name, this man will suffer a lot. But being a chosen vessel, God will work through him to enlighten many countries in the world. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight. So listening to the words, couldn't see anything now, but he made sure that the one appeared to him, now sending this disciple called Ananias. And the vision he had seen, that this man will bring him the sight again. So he believed all things happened and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. So he was blind three days. Scales came out of the eyes as if telling Paul, you were blind. There were scales, covers over your sight. So you couldn't see the truth. Now you will see the truth perfectly. And he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Ananias was like a priest in Damascus, and in the synaxarium of our Coptic church, we call him the bishop of Damascus. So he baptized Saul, and he put his hand on him, and Saul became Christian and accepted the Holy Spirit. And now he could see not only by this physical eyes but now he believed in Christ and he could see the truth so when he had received food he was strengthened because he fasted for three days 
Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. So Ananias took him and let others of the believers in Damascus welcome him. And he filled the community of Christians. He came for these people to take them in bondage and to take them to Jerusalem. Now he is a member in this body of the church and he loved them so much and they were praying God because of this Paul. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues. This man was very strong. He started preaching the name of Jesus Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem? Everyone knew the name of Saul of Tarsus. Everyone knew that this is the best persecutor of Christians. How come now he's speaking about the name of Jesus Christ and the real Son of God? And has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelled in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is this Christ. Knowing the prophets, studying the books of the Old Testament, and seeing Christ by his eyes, and be filled with the Holy Spirit, his witness was the strongest. And he could convince any Jew, man, that Jesus Christ is the real Messiah, is the real Son of God, is the real Savior, is God incarnate. So he started practicing evangelism in the, with the Jew people in Damascus. Now, after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him because they couldn't stop his preaching. And this man is like dangerous against Jewish people now. So they planned to kill him in Damascus. But their plot became known to Saul with the will of God. You know, God told him that these people were about to kill you. And they watched the gates day and night. So they were watching him to kill him by all means. Um, then the disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall in a large basket. So it was really serious because this man, everyone wanted to kill him in Damascus. All Jew people wanted to kill him because he is the destroyer of Christ's people. Now he is the defender. He is the greatest you know, witness of Christianity now. So they tried to kill him, but God saved him through the disciples in Damascus, and he went away from Damascus. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, because many of them couldn't believe that this Saul, the one who destroyed many communities, now he is defending the faith. Some of them couldn't believe it. Others were still scared afraid of him. But they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. So Ananias was the first teacher and Barnabas was the second teacher to Saul. And these people helped him so much because they took his hand and engaged him with the community of the church in Damascus, then in Jerusalem. Barnabas was very much respected by all the disciples and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So the words of Barnabas convinced the apostle that this man was chosen by God and Christ himself said that this one will be the chosen vessel. So the apostles welcomed him and accepted him among the members of the church and they were happily, you know, inviting him to share in preaching the word of God. So he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out. He said the early um, apostles in preaching in some areas. 
But soon, you know, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Hellenists. But they attempted to kill him. Again, there was another trial to kill him. Because this man was talented not only to speak the words from the Old Testament, but also to speak with some kind of philosophy. Because he brought up not only in Jerusalem, but also in Greece, he studied Greek philosophy. And he knew the background or the mind of the Hellenistic people. Although many of them joined the Jewish community, but he could convince both parties, the party of the Jewish background and the party of the Greek background. He spoke many good philosophers, and through philosophy he approached them to deliver the message of Christ. When the brethren found out, they brought him down to Sidaria. So they pushed him away from Jerusalem. He couldn't stay in Damascus, he couldn't stay in Jerusalem because he is like the best witness now to Christ and people couldn't stop him. Sent him out to Tarsus. Tarsus, it's like the city of his birth. So there, maybe the family of Paul and the family members of Saul, according to, to the tradition, did not accept his preaching. Most of them refused his attitude of preaching the name of Jesus Christ. So in Tarsus, he couldn't spread the word of Christ and in other areas. So he felt like limited, bounded by the family boundaries and, and the early relations, so he couldn't stay much in Tarsus. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. The church were growing and bringing fruits every day in Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, all areas of Palestine now. Galilee, the northern part in which our Lord Jesus Christ were from Galilee, the, the, from Nazareth and the Samaria, the middle part, and the Judea, the southern part, all these areas were filled now with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many, many fruits coming now, many souls were saved. And walking in the fear of the Lord, the church were growing. It's not like the church, like a building, the communities of Christians were, you know, spreading and, and increasing in number and also in the fear of God, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They were multiplied. So with the strength of the Holy Spirit, people could see the grace of God and numbers were always multiplying. May God bless you all. Amen.